As a new Etsy print-on-demand seller, it can be wildly frustrating when you're just starting out and you're not getting any sales momentum in your new shop. Or perhaps you've been at it for a few months and your sales just aren't where you hoped they would be. As someone who has audited at least a couple hundred shops in the last few years, I can tell you that it typically boils down to assessing a few different key areas. Are listings speaking to an ideal customer? Are listings optimized to get seen in the first place? Are listings visually appealing? And is the seller prioritizing a realistic mindset? So for today's video, let's tackle four fixes to address each of these very common issues that I typically see. And make sure that you stick around for number four because it's arguably the most important. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy. I've started and stopped multiple entrepreneurial adventures in the span of more than a decade and learned a lot along the way. Now, as the owner of multiple six-figure businesses, including Etsy print-on-demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey so that you can stop the overwhelm, start making progress, and thrive with your print-on-demand business. As we dive in, I want you to do two things for me first. First, go into your Etsy shop, go into your shop manager, go to your listings view, and then on the right hand side, look for the sort drop down button. I want you to sort that by expiration soonest first. That means these are your oldest listings and will give us the most data to work with for the first few fixes. Then if you don't already have it turned on, I want you to turn on that little stats button. It's a little slide bar that a lot of new sellers miss. Not today though, turn that on. This is a great view at a glance for each of your listings to see how they are performing individually. And for our fixes, we want to look for listings that have zero visits. This means that no one's clicking on it, no one's interested in these, and therefore these listings are holding you back and likely have the most potential for improvement. Don't feel overwhelmed if you have a lot, it's okay. Pick a few to start with as we navigate these fixes use those as your testing ground, and then go from there as you start to get the hang of this process. For your first fix, before clicking in any further or diving deeper into your listings, look at your listings collectively. If I were to go in and randomly pick five listings on your listing manager screen right now, could I easily figure out based just on the thumbnail and the first part of your title, who the ideal customer is. And if I asked you who the ideal customer is for each of them and how your product speaks to them, could you tell me? If the answer to either of these is no, there's your first fix. You need to know who you are wanting to sell to and how to connect with them, both in keywords to reach them and designs that attract them. You might have a general shop with several different ideal customers, and perhaps you create cohesion by using similar color palettes or aesthetics across them. You might have a more niche specific shop based on a theme of ideal customers like professions or hobbies. Or you might have a more targeted sub niche shop where you're focusing on a smaller segment of the market. For example, outdoor enthusiasts. Regardless of the structure you choose, you need to be clear on who your target markets are. If you are simply filling your shop based on the latest shiny objects you see in a video, but you don't have a customer in mind and you don't do any work to validate if there's demand for that customer, then your shop will have a lack of focus and likely won't see much success. So pick a direction to focus on. Once you've clarified your focus and validated that you are creating with a target customer in mind, then you need to make sure your listings are optimized based on Etsy SEO or search engine optimization. And that is our fix number two. I have a longer discussion on SEO in my free course and other videos, but basically SEO is the secret sauce of how your listings show up in the Etsy search results. In a quick nutshell, Etsy's SEO and ranking works in two phases, search query and then ranking. The search query is where 
Etsy matches what the customer types into the search bar with keywords that are in your listing, particularly your title, tags, and description. The closer your keywords and phrases match what the customer typed into the search bar, the better your chances of getting seen. From there, Etsy sorts those search results, and then the order that a customer sees listings in is entirely dependent on the next phase, which is seven different ranking factors, including relevancy and listing quality score. For today, we're going to focus on the search query phase, since you can have a direct and immediate impact on that based on your keywords. In particular, I want you to take a look at your listing titles, keeping in mind that the first part of your title is the second most visible part of your listing for customers in the search results after the listing thumbnail. The title is critical, and one of the most common mistakes that I see in shops, particularly with the title, is the seller is simply repeating a word or phrase that's on the item itself. So if it's a mug that says, my best friend is a dog, their title will start with something like, my best friend is a dog, which unfortunately, no one is typing that into the search bar. Or the seller is using very generic keywords like inspirational gift or gift for her or mom sweatshirt as the main part of their title. Using a phrase in your title that nobody is searching for or using overly generic terms are not going to get you anywhere with the search rankings. If you're way too specific, you may not show up in search results at all. And if you're way too broad, you'll land so far down in the search results behind everyone else with better ranking. The best approach for keywords and titles is to number one, make sure you are researching your keywords with a tool like eRank, which by the way, just got a lot more amazing with their new Sidekick Chrome extension. And number two, think beyond just describing the item and remember that you're targeting an ideal customer. Remember fix number one? So let's say for example, this is your listing in my cruise era shirt and it's a comfort color shirt and there's a spot for customization. Make a list of facts about what the item is, who it could be used for or sold to and when it might be purchased for celebrating or gifting. These might be super broad on your list at first, but then you're going to use them to look up the words on your list in E-Rank or whatever tool you're using to determine which ones are the strongest as well as potential related keywords that you might not have thought of. I like to personally use E-Rank because I can save keywords to designated keyword lists and then use that list to determine which keywords I ultimately want to use for a particular niche or product. So for this example, I searched for things like cruise and vacation and got a variety of recommended keywords and phrases in E-Rank that were more specific that I could then save to my list. From there, you want to start with the strongest, most relevant keyword phrase in the front of your title so that it coincides with what the customer sees first. You want this to be relevant to the listing itself. So for this one, I would create a title such as custom cruise shirts, comma, in my era comfort colors t-shirt, comma, mother, daughter, birthday cruise, comma, personalized sister trip gifts. The punctuation using commas doesn't impact your SEO, but it can help with readability for the customer, so I personally like to use it. Notice that we're not repeating the same generic words six times in our title. The goal here is to leverage a combination of exact phrases based on research and other potential search terms that a customer might be using in that search bar so that you can ultimately appear in a variety of searches. Don't forget to incorporate keywords related to gifting for your items as well. A little bonus for this fix is that as you're doing that, you can also replicate some of your top relevant keywords and combinations within your tags, as well as your description. This helps ensure that Etsy will understand what your listing is about and show it to the right people. It just helps to reinforce who it's for. This is what helps get your listing seen. Then once it's seen, we need to make sure that your customer will actually be interested in it and click into it and then eventually convert into a sale. 
This is what will ultimately tell Etsy whether or not someone is interested in your listing and whether it's getting the right attention. So then in order to do that, that brings us to fix number three, and that is evaluating the visual appeal of your listings, which basically boils down to your design and your mock-up, particularly within that first thumbnail that shows up for your Etsy listing in the search results, because that is the very first thing that a customer will see when they are scrolling through those listings within their search query. You only get one chance to make a first impression. If your design isn't creating enough interest within the search results around it, or if it's on the generic mock-up or white background that you got from your print provider, or if the design is just not quite optimal to begin with, they will keep on scrolling, friends. Your goal is to have something that compels them to stop the scroll. Is your design on an aesthetic mock-up? Do you have a listing video? This alone can create movement when a customer hovers over your listing. Is it clear from the thumbnail what the product is? I often see listings with the image zoomed in way too far on the design, so it's unclear if it's a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a tote bag. If it's a text-based design, does the font make sense and is it legible? Do the graphic design colors make sense with the product colors you've selected so that they stand out but don't clash? Your mock-ups should coincide with what your design is and who it's geared towards, but it also needs to be aesthetically pleasing and should not be the generic ones from your print provider. Those are not optimized for Etsy listings and so they typically don't perform as well. If you are selling apparel, you should also be avoiding AI mock-ups because those are not accurate representations of the fit or colors of the common brands that you're likely selling. Good mock-ups are a solid investment for your print-on-demand business, especially since you likely will not be getting samples of every single design that you sell. And then within your mock-up, make sure that your design coincides with your niche and who you're selling to and that it is a desirable design for that customer. Does it speak to your ideal customer? Does it create an emotional connection with them? Remember back to fix number one? And with that, I'll tell you right now that a lot of your early designs may not be that great, and that's okay. I will be the first to admit that mine were not that great either, but be honest with yourself when you go back and review your listings. Most of my own early listings are not there anymore because I've learned, I've practiced, and I've gotten better over time. Developing an eye for design and getting it to look just right and to have it be aesthetically pleasing within a mock-up takes practice, and practice can take time. Nobody starts out as an expert on day one, but you do need to diligently work on your skill sets so that you do eventually get better over time. It will happen, but you must be willing to put in the time to keep practicing and keep trying and continue researching and paying attention to designs that are selling so that you know what to look for and can build your expertise. Give yourself permission to be a beginner and don't be too hard on yourself if you decide that you need to change your design or that you have listings that aren't up to the standard that you had hoped it was when you originally created it. Going through the learning process is not your enemy. And the final fix that we're going to dive into, shifting your mindset. You need to establish realistic expectations based on the actions that you've taken so far in your business. And if you aren't seeing the results that you want, what actions are you willing to take in order to get there? And where can you make changes in your actions? How long have you been open? How much time have you actually spent on researching your niches and diving into your ideal customers? How much time have you actually put into optimizing your listings and keywords? How much time are you spending just scrolling on Etsy or Pinterest or trendy websites based on your niche so that you can stay in tune with what's in demand? How many products have you put into your shop because they make sense and are cohesive with your other offerings versus a shiny object that you heard about in a video and randomly added without actually researching how to leverage it for your own customers. 
how many of your listings were created in a panic because you're worried about your lack of sales instead of focusing on your ideal customer and what they might actually want to buy. Long-term results are created by the actions you take every single day. You have greater control over your actions than your results, so control your controllables. If you are a new shop, momentum takes time. It takes time for Etsy's algorithm to understand what your shop is, what you're selling, who you are, and if you're even legitimate. It also takes time for you as a seller to develop your skills in not only creating products, but creating designs that sell. Sometimes this takes longer for some sellers than others, and that's okay. Stop comparing yourself to others who might be further along on their journey than you are. I guarantee they've gone through the same moments that you have. Focus on your journey and the actions that you can control to navigate your own path towards success. I will leave you with a final word of encouragement that I recently shared in my coaching group. Imperfect action is better than no action at all because you will never fully have answers until you start taking action and allow yourself to build knowledge and learn from your experiences along the way. Sometimes ideas will work out. This gives you data so that you can do more of what's working. Sometimes ideas don't work out. This also gives you data and lets you know to try something different next time. This is the beauty of the learning process. Have fun with it and don't be afraid of it. You won't have all the answers or be an expert in the beginning. Keep taking action anyway and then be willing to adapt along your journey as you learn more and get better and better, which you will. I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print-on-demand business, make sure you've got the notifications turned on for my channel so you don't miss out on any of my content. And in the meantime, be sure to check out my free print-on-demand course in the description, as well as my time-blocking series here on my channel for an even deeper dive on the critical steps for success. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here, and I'll see you on the next one.